So, we have seen the Lebesgue measure, its invariance properties with respect to translation, dilation and reflection. We have seen an example of a non measurable set and we looked at measurable functions now. We will be comparing the Riemann integration and Lebesgue integration in this lecture uh, and our aim will be to show that Lebesgue integral is more general than Riemann integral. More importantly, when function is Riemann integrable, we will show that function is measurable and the Riemann integral is equal to the Lebesgue integral. So, that actually gives us a genuine generalization of uh, Riemann integral. Uh, more importantly, the, the collection of measurable functions with respect to which we can do Lebesgue integration is much larger than uh, Riemann integrable functions. In particular, uh, we know that if I have a sequence of measurable functions, the limit of a measurable uh, limit of the sequence of measurable functions is measurable, which is not true in the case of Riemann, Riemann integral uh, per se. If I have a sequence of Riemann integrable functions, the limit need not be Riemann integrable. So, such uh, such drawbacks of uh, Riemann integral in some sense are rectified uh, using Lebesgue integration. Okay, let us start. So, Riemann and Riemann and Lebesgue integral. Okay. So, we will we will recall uh, Riemann integration, but not in full detail. So, we have an interval a b and we have a function defined on a b let us say real valued and we assume that it is bounded. So, Riemann integration is defined mainly for bounded functions okay. and capital letter p denotes a partition of partition of the set a b. Okay. So, we can let us denote it by um, x naught and of course, we take things which are less uh, in increasing order x naught less than x 1 less than x 2 etcetera etcetera let us say x n which is uh, b. Okay. So, all that we are doing is we have a b and we simply partition it right. So, x x 1 x 2 etcetera etcetera x n minus 1 and x n is b. Well, capital M i this is the supremum of the function f okay, where you take x i minus 1 less than y less than or equal to x i. So, on one side it is strict it is not these things do not make much difference, but let us be very careful small m i is the infimum. Since the function is bounded, these things exist and are finite. Less than to y strictly less than x. So in each interval, we are looking at the supremum and the infimum of the function. Okay. So we can define using this. We define step functions. So define step functions. Functions alpha and beta. So, alpha will correspond to the upper sum. So, alpha x is defined to be capital M i that is the supremum when x falls into that interval, right. So, x i minus 1 less than to x strictly less than x i. Similarly, beta of x to be the infimum x i minus 1 less than to x less than x i. You can define arbitrarily the at the end point. So, define alpha of b and beta of b arbitrarily. 
it do, it doesn't really matter in the integration because the strict inequality at this end points we will leave out b when we define alpha and beta so you you assign some values if you want you put zero doesn't really matter so of course these are measurable functions these are step functions measurable functions right lebesgue measurable functions now if you look at so let us have a measure space first of all so i have i have the space ab right this is my x if you like the sigma algebra is the lebesgue sigma algebra of ab what does that mean this is you look at all those sets in in the lebesgue sigma algebra of r which are contained here right this is simply taking the intersection of so this is like taking the intersection of l of r with the interval ab right you look at all those measurable sets which are inside ab right and m is the lebesgue measure m is the lebesgue measure so it is defined on all of r so it is defined on any measurable set contained in r right so that is our triple x f m and alpha and beta are the functions which we define alpha and beta are measurable functions right defined on x defined on x so integration makes sense right as long as they exist okay so let us integrate so let us compute the integral of x alpha dm well what is this this i am integrating over the set ab of course so i can write like this it's not necessary what is alpha alpha is summation it is defined to be mi over this interval right so i will go from 1 2 3 etc right so it is a step function so this is simply capital mi multiplied with the indicator function of xi minus 1 to xi right so here open let us say yeah okay this is the so i going from 1 to some some n right n or n minus 1 or whatever so linear combination of dm well we know how to do this right because the integral is linear so it goes inside and integral of an indicator function is simply the measure of that set right so this is summation i equal to 1 to n capital m i times measure of the interval x i minus 1 to x i which is which is the length of that interval so that is x i minus x i minus 1 right with in our language this is in the Riemann integral language this is simply the upper sum of f with respect to the partition right so this is upper sum of f with respect to the partition p now we do the same thing for the lower sum so if you if you integrate the function beta dm well this is integral over x again summation i equal to 1 to n small m i these are the infimums indicator of x i minus 1 to x i dm which if you continue this you will get i equal to 1 to n small m i times the length of the interval which is this which is the lower sum right lower sum of f over sum of f with respect to the partition p okay good so both lower sum and upper sum have been written in terms of lebesgue integrals so now we take we take a sequence so let pk be a sequence of partition such that p k plus 1 is a refinement of refinement of p k 
right which is same as saying pk is contained in pk plus 1 right you add more uh, divisions in pk that is how you get pk plus 1 right and such that modulus of pk goes to 0 so modulus of pk is the so that is the standard notation in Riemann integral mod pk is the length of the largest interval length of the largest interval in pk or given by defined by pk so you want the lengths of the intervals to go to zero right so you make finer and finer partitions and the length of the intervals should go to zero and then you take upper sums lower sums and see what happens to the limit okay so let alpha k and beta k so remember if i we defined alpha and beta given a partition p given a partition p we have the uh, functions alpha and beta so if i take pk i have alpha k and beta k right so let alpha k and beta k denote denote the functions defined earlier defined earlier with respect to the partition pk right so these are step functions defined by uh, uh, supremum and uh, infimum inside the intervals defined by pk well then what do we know if you look at the definition of alpha and, k and beta k you will immediately see that alpha 1 is greater than or equal to alpha 2 greater than or equal to alpha 3 and so on and you have f in the middle and greater than or equal to beta 1 greater than to beta 2 and so on ok. Uh, well I should write this in a slightly better form. So, it is not a decreasing sequence here it is an increasing sequence here. So, I have um, beta 1 um, smaller than beta 2 smaller than beta 3 etcetera etcetera ok. So, the alphas alpha k's decrease beta k's increase right that is what we are saying so alpha k are decreasing functions alpha k decreasing sequence decreasing sequence beta k increasing sequence of functions increasing sequence of measurable functions and f is sandwiched in between since they decrease and increase the limit will exist ok. So, let alpha equal to limit of alpha j, j going to infinity these are functions right. So, so what I mean is alpha of x alpha of x is equal to alpha limit of alpha j of x alpha j of x is a decreasing sequence of real numbers bounded below by f of x. So, it will converge similarly beta of x to be limit of the betas limit j going to infinity beta j x. So, they exist. So, these alpha and beta are nice ex they exist ok are nice functions and since alpha j and beta j are measurable remember the, these are step functions right the alpha and beta are uh, step functions for any partition we have alpha and beta which are measurable functions. So, so the alpha k and beta k are these are measurable functions ok these are measurable functions and alpha and beta being the limit of measurable functions are measurable then alpha and beta are measurable functions and of course bounded and bounded right. So, mod alpha will be less than or equal to some m and similarly or let us say some use letter k and similarly mod beta is less than to k. So, you choose k large enough right. So, their integrals will make sense ok. So, I have measurable functions bounded on a on a uh, interval a b right. So, integral of over a b mod alpha t m this always exists because this is a positive function we are integrating, uh, but that is finite because I, I know it is less than to k integral over a b dm which is the measure of 
a b which is b minus a which is finite right. Similarly, for similarly for beta. So, both alpha and beta belong to L 1 of a b with respect to the uh, sigma algebra and the measure m right. So, we remember we have defined the space L 1 of mu where mu was a measure. And since uh, f is bounded bo every alpha k. So, since so let me write down this as a statement since f is bounded uh, let us say by by capital K all the alpha k and beta k these are made up of supremum of f and infimum of f on each intervals. So, they are also bounded by k. So, all alpha k and beta k are bounded by k right. So, let us let us go back to the definition of alpha and beta in the beginning that will be clear. So, the m i m i here is the supremum of uh, oh, ok I did not write down that. So, let us right the, this is uh, ok. So, the supremum of m i is here yeah supremum of f in that interval. So, al the values of alpha are supremum of f in various intervals, but f is bounded by k. So, the m i is also less than or equal to k right. So, that corresponds to any partition the alpha k and beta k are bounded by the same same bound for f. So, I have mod alpha k less than to capital K for every small k. Similarly, mod beta k is less than to capital K for every k and k is a constant. So, constant and and so, it is a measurable function and belongs to L 1 right because measure of a b is finite. So, constant functions are there. So, what is the situation we have? We have alpha k converging to alpha beta k converging to beta right and all of them are bounded by an integrable function right. So, we have a measure, we have a space, we have a sigma algebra, we have a measure and we have sequence of measurable functions converging dominated by a constant which is integrable. So, we can apply the dominated convergence theorem we can apply the dominated convergence theorem right. So, let us recall the dominated convergence theorem here. So, I have x, I have f, I have mu. If f n are measurable, f n converges to f almost everywhere mod f n s are bounded by some function g which is in L 1 that is the important part the dominating function has to be integrable then well f is measurable and integral over x mod f n minus f d mu goes to 0. This was the theorem we proved in the abstract setting which we can apply in this particular concrete setting right. In particular the integral of f n d mu will converge to integral of f d mu ok. So, we apply that. So, apply d c t to get well what do we get? We will get that integral over x alpha k d m we have Lebesgue measure now. So, let me change x to a b. So, that we keep track of the interval a b. This I know will converge to integral over a b alpha d m right. Alpha is the limit of alpha case. Similarly, for beta beta right. Similarly, similarly integral over a b these are all Lebesgue integrals remember that beta k d m converges to integral over a b beta d. So, we have this much whenever we have a Riemann integrable function we can partition we, uh, we get alpha and beta 
and we get the upper upper integral and lower integral as the usual Riemann integral, right? So uh, recall that the left hand side here is the upper sum of and this is the lower sum of f and if they converge they will converge to the uh, upper sum and the lower sum of f right so the right, the limit here we get is the upper sum of f right or upper integral of f that is the correct terminology upper integral upper integral of f and this is the lower integral of f and we say that f is Riemann degrable Riemann degrable if the upper sum upper integral and lower integral are same right so upper integral is equal to lower integral which which is same as integral so upper integral is given by a Lebesgue integral now that is alpha dm is same as integral over a b beta dm so all this is just discussion right starting from a uh, riemann degrable function we have this much so now we can state the theorem so I'll, I'll leave an exercise here. So a simple exercise: if x in AB is not the endpoint of any intervals in PK, any intervals defined by the partitions PK. then so that is a countably many points right p k p k s are finitely many points you take union of p k s you will get countably many points which has measure 0. Then f is continuous at x continuous at x if and only if alpha x equal to f of x equal to beta x ok this is a usual epsilon delta argument. So, remember what was alpha and beta? Alpha k's were decreasing and beta j's were increasing. So, we have these functions alpha and beta and if alpha x equal to f of x equal to beta x then x the function f is continuous at x. So, except on a set which is countable, countable sets have measure 0 because singletons have measure 0 and additivity property will tell me that countable sets have measure 0. So, except on a set of measure 0, this continuity property happens. Okay. So, now we can state the theorem. So, we have the alpha, we have the beta and we have continuity if and only if alpha x equal to f of x equal to beta x. So, theorem. So, this is the comparison between uh, Riemann and uh, Lebesgue integral. So, let f from a to b to r it can be complex valued also, but uh, linearity of the integral will take care of all that we want bounded then a f is Riemann integral integrable if and only if f is continuous almost everywhere in a b. So, remember the concept of almost everywhere something is uh, continuous almost everywhere meaning there is a set of measure 0. So, that outside that it is outside that meaning at, at all the points outside that it is continuous ok. b in that case that means if f is Riemann degrable, then the integrals are same. Then in that case, f is measurable, and the Riemann integral of f 
is equal to the Lebesgue integral of f. Lebesgue integral of f. So, if the function is Riemann integrable then it is measurable and the Riemann integral of the function f is same as the Lebesgue integral. So, let us let us try to prove a. So, I'll assume f is Riemann integrable f is Riemann integrable. So, I write r i for that well then what happens then the upper integral and the lower integral should be same right. So, what is the upper integral that is the integral of alpha remember the alpha we constructed using the limit of alpha k and the lower integrals are given by beta. So, they will have to be same right. So, upper integral is equal to lower integral right that is same as integral over a b alpha d m is equal to integral over a b beta d right these two will be same. So, remember how alpha and beta are constructed. So, let me write down that alphas were decreasing right etcetera etcetera f was middle and betas were increasing beta, um, beta 1 smaller than beta 2 smaller than etcetera etc. Okay. So, f was in between. So, the alpha so because alpha all the alphas are bigger than all the betas we the limit will also have this property right. So, not just that because f is in between we we actually have that alpha x is greater than or equal to f of x greater than or to beta x for every x in So, alpha is greater than beta, but the integrals are same. So, let me rewrite this. This implies integral over a b alpha minus beta d m is 0. Okay. But alpha minus beta is a non negative function. So, if I have a non negative function it is and its integral is 0, then it is 0 almost everywhere. So, this is one of the theorems we proved in the abstract settings. This tells me that alpha minus beta equal to 0 almost everywhere which means except on a set of measure 0 except on a set of measure 0 alpha x is equal to beta x, but then because of this it will also have to be equal to f of x ok. That means, f is continuous almost everywhere f is continuous almost everywhere. So, that is the first thing and conversely converse is to l conversely f is continuous almost everywhere implies alpha equal to beta almost everywhere. So, integral over a b alpha minus beta d m equal to 0 which implies integral over alpha integral of alpha is same as integral over beta which is same as lower integral is same as lower integral is equal to upper integral which is same as saying f is Riemann integral right. So, that part is trivial ok. So, that proves a well what about b? b tells me that if f is Riemann integrable then I know it is continuous almost everywhere then f is continuous almost everywhere ok and f is equal to alpha equal to beta almost everywhere ok because alpha equal to beta almost everywhere. So, because of this so that is that is what we have written here right. So, hence f is measurable hence f is measurable because alpha and beta are measurable and f is equal to alpha or beta almost everywhere remember our, our sigma algebra is complete. So, this is crucial here L of r or Lebesgue of a b is complete. 
So, if I have a function which is equal to almost everywhere to a measurable function, that function will have to be measurable if the sigma algebra is complete. But now you can use DCT, right? So, use so f is measurable, use DCT, okay. Well, you do not have to use DCT again, we have already used it. So, uh, use the fact that alpha is greater than to f greater than or equal to beta. So, this would imply when I integrate, so these are Lebesgue integrals alpha dm will be greater than or equal to integral over a b f dm. That makes sense now because f is measurable, f is bounded. So, it is a finite quantity greater than or equal to integral over a b beta dm. But if f is Riemann integrable, these two are same. So, all the three are same, right. So, if f is Riemann integral integrable, then integral over alpha the, that is the upper integral that is same as the lower integral, right. And so, it will also have to be equal to the integral of f. which is so the left hand side. So, this is the Riemann integral of f. Riemann integral of f and this is the Lebesgue integral of f. This is the Lebesgue integral of f. So, if f is Riemann integrable, we have just proved that f is measurable and the integrals are, are same. So, we will stop with an example easy example. So, now if you want to integrate uh, functions you can do that, okay. but sometimes you may have to use various theorems. So, I will stop with this example. So, look at f of uh, look at 0 1 and you have the Lebesgue sigma algebra and you have the measure m. I want to compute compute integral over 0 1 let us say 1 by root x dx, dx is dmx with respect to Lebesgue integral. So, so we are looking at the function f of x to be 1 by root x when x is in 0 uh, open 0 1 and it could be anything at uh, x equal to 0. Okay, So, I can put 0 because this is a set of measures 0 it does not matter. So, this is a measurable function right? and because it is continuous. So, it is measurable and I want to compute its Lebesgue measure Lebesgue integral over 0 1. Well, the problem is this is not bounded. So, you cannot apply the Riemann integral directly. So, what you do is you cut the interval 0 1 at let us say 1 by n. So, you define f n x to be 1 by root x for x belonging to 1 by n to 1 and 0 otherwise. Okay. So, then you see that f n increases to f almost everywhere and so by monotone convergence theorem integral over 0 1 f n d m will increase to integral over 0 1 f d m which is what we want to calculate. But here now you can apply Riemann degradation because f n's are bounded f n is bounded so, this is so LHS equal to the Riemann integral of f n right f n is continuous. So, it is it is Riemann integrable. Okay. So, how do you compute this? This is simply the usual integral from 1 by n to 1 1 by root x dx which is equal to 2 root x from 1 by n to 1 which is 2 minus 2 by root. But MCT tells me that if I take the limit, I will get the integral of f. So, this goes to 2. Okay, that is what you generally do, right. If I if I want to integrate 1 by root x from 0 to 1, I am going to get 2. Okay, so, that is where. So, you use MCT to justify that. Okay, if, the, if you have bounded functions, their Riemann integrals are equal to the Lebesgue integral. Okay, so, we will stop here. Uh, so, we have sort of completed the construction of uh, Lebesgue measure, we have seen finer properties of Lebesgue measure, Lebesgue sets 
we also have seen that if the function is Riemann integral then it is measurable and the Riemann integral of the function is same as the Lebesgue uh, integral and the last example we discussed tells you how to deal with actual computations of uh, Lebesgue integration. So, in some cases this will be very easy, in some cases you justify it using the three theorems you have. So, remember the three major theorems from abstract integration all that can be applied for uh, Lebesgue integration. From the next class onwards, we will go to abstract settings, we will look at a locally compact uh, Hausdorff space. So, we will need some topological results, I will state all those results clearly, I will not prove any of this topological results, but I will use it uh, in the proofs uh, later on. So, we will be looking at a locally compact Hausdorff space and the Borel sigma algebra. So, remember the Borel sigma algebra is the sigma algebra generated by open sets and the measures defined uh, there and we will look at certain finer properties of uh, these positive Borel measures. So, we will stop here.